Hey, Ryan, how's it going today? Good. How you doing, Jennifer? So I thought we'd talk a little bit, you know, CAD talk. We wanted to kind of support the concept of why Agile. And we mean Agile in the term of like Scrum and Agile development and that kind of thing. Here are the questions um, I have. So if we are going to change the culture of manufacturing, which you and I try to do on a daily basis, right? Uh, then I really think we have got to change the way we do business. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in the, this model-based enterprise, MBD, MBE efforts, you know, you're, you're bridging the gap between IT and, and manufacturing. You're bringing the two together. So something different has to be done. Absolutely. Because I'm pretty sure it's not working now. <laughs> Pretty yeah, much. <laughs> not working. Yeah. All right. So, so in that, in that mindset, um, I'm going to throw my money on the table to use an agile mindset. How about you? Uh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like if I had any money to throw on a table and I could actually go like to a place to gamble. <laughs> well, I'm going to throw my money on the table because I lived it uh, with a waterfall approach and not an agile approach and it didn't work. And uh yeah, it caused a lot of sleepless nights and a lot of frustration and um, a lot of hard feelings sometimes, you know, because people just got frustrated. <laughs> oh, people, 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 yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, here's the thing I'm thinking about is that when when we think about a model-based implementation, whether you're doing the D, the E, or all at once or separate or even a PLM implementation, these are such gigantic, enormous scope things. And I just don't think you can get to the technical details with a very pristine waterfall boop plan. It's just not, you're just not getting dirty enough in that. No, because, the, you know, a lot of people take this waterfall approach and they find, um, they go out and find a bunch of MPD tools, right? We can annotate a model, we can publish a 3D PDF, uh, you know, they, they find these um, solutions before they even looked for a problem Solutioneering. to solve. Woohoo! Right. That's my so, favorite. yeah, we just, <laughs> we just got this really cool solution. Now let's go find some problems to solve. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the way it's supposed to work. <laughs> no, and I'm pretty sure your executives and bean counters are like, um, yeah, that's not going to, we're not going to do that. <laughs> But but it's, it's got to work, work because I wrote a white paper that said if we implement MBD, we're going to save 30% in our wow. product development costs. This is yeah. something you don't get in engineering school, right? Like you get to write all the technical detail and do all the proof and the math. But what about the business case part? Like, hello? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I no, mean, you, they're, they're missing totally. so many different pieces of it. Uh, you know, the processes and the people. I mean, you wouldn't go buy a riding lawnmower, right, and push it around your yard. You'd probably have to get your neighbors to help you mow the lawn, and it'd take you 10 times as long. So right. you you have to look at the processes. You have to look at the skills of the people. Yeah, but you're bringing us back to, you know, our favorite thing, right? People, processes, tools, and standards. We really like those standards, too. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you know, the, the Scrum Alliance has a really cool kind of mess, manifesto around Agile. And kind of to me, maybe that's a little bit like a standard um, of how we do operations. Yeah, so, you know, one of the other things I think I really like about uh, the Agile mindset and how it can really help us work through some of these technical details is how we rapidly get feedback during the process. Mm -hmm. um, You've been working um, with one of our customers writing user stories. Tell me about that process, because we were getting really seriously deep into like the weeds of the technical and the nitty gritty and down to things that I'm pretty sure people have never really been able to enunciate or articulate before in model based in words. What's yeah. That process like? um, it can be painful at times, you know, you, you use the word rapidly. It doesn't always go as rapidly as people would like. Uh, um, okay, because, well, rapid words come back at you, yeah? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, but, well, compared, compared, and to emotion. Not, <laughs> compared to not doing it at all, it's a lot yeah. It's a lot more rapid than, you know, than spinning your wheels for three years. Um, or five or ten. Or five or ten, you know, whatever it might be. Um, yeah, I mean, it's so, you know, through these pilots with this customer, we're, we're uh, you know, kind of, I, I remember I had a, he was a CTO, he, he'd always say, we need to slow down to speed up. 
right? Everybody loved the thought of slowing down to speed up, but yet nobody ever did. <laughs> um, and then, right. you know, six months later, they're like, oh, what did we do wrong? Uh, so th I think this agile approach uh, is actually putting into practice um, slowing down to speed up, right? Instead of jumping right into, all right, we're going to get rid of the drawing. We're going to annotate a model. We're going to, you know, wait, create a QIF file. We're going to throw a PDF downstream and then just see what happens, right? We're actually look, talking to people, right? Uh, there's an yeah. avocado. <laughs> Um, what? Yeah, we're say? talking to people. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and that, and that's that's what's really hard. So, I, I think to yeah. describe that first, before I get into how it's been going with this customer, I remember working on projects for years when I worked in like an engineering IT organization. Um, you know, we were like the redheaded stepchildren of IT. We all <laughs> had an engineering background, but yet. <laughs> We were in an IT organization. We were responsible for the CAD and the CAE and the PLM tools. You know, we were CAD admins, PLM administrators. Um, and we also, you know, a lot of us came from, I, I mean, I'm a plastics engineer, so I designed uh, injection molds and, and things like that. So I tended to be a know-it-all, right? So we would sit down and <laughs> uh, write up a business requirements document and then hand it off to the development team or our software vendors and spend six months or a year, you know, coming up with some uh, new capability only to realize that we completely missed the mark on those requirements. Right? I, I've got some graphics for you. You keep talking. <laughs> sure. Um, so, and it, and it's no fault of anybody, right? We all, I think we all, to a certain extent, think we're know-it-alls. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, so this, to compare that to this agile um, approach, Right. We're not spending a, a week or two as a business analyst writing a, a very comprehensive business requirements document. We're uh, breaking it into chunks, right? We're, we're not going to boil the ocean in, in a year. We're going to look at every person across the enterprise and even into the supply chain and what they do for a living. What do they, how do they use a drawing today? Um, you know, I need this, you know, as a machinist, I need this information so that I can make a part, right? There's that cookie cutter user story approach as a such and such, I need this information so that I can do something, right? So it really forces those people to put some words to describe what they actually do, what kind of information do they need? Um, and it's very powerful, but getting that user story out of people can sometimes be very difficult because they may not want to do it. They 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 may just uh, have other priorities and they want to get to doing their job. So yeah, go ahead. Oh, or like me, English is not my first language. <laughs> or that, <laughs> right. Basically it's math. So like grammar and syntax of math, I get grammar and syntax of English. You can forget it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's super hard, I think, especially for the engineering brains, right? It's not what we were trained to do. We skipped right. English on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> to and add in math. <laughs> we, we get on our, you know, high horses, you know, in the yeah. ivory tower and say, this is the right thing to do. We're going to kick mm -hmm. it down to the stream and they should be able to figure this out. Um, mm -hmm. Right. And yeah, maybe they should. But guess what? They need some help. Um, Absolutely. So, so I'd rather know up front what these people need. Then that way I'm not spending six months to a year trying to create some new shiny object or, you know, capability, uh, software capability, only to find out that I completely missed the mark. Because that's, that's really demoralizing for everybody. Nobody totally. wants nobody wants to go into work one day and realize that what they just worked on for the last six months or even worse, the last five years was wrong right um yeah, so totally again let's slow down talk to people uh figure out what they need now we can start uh, uh, building these tools and you know you're kind of blending software development developing these digital mbe mbd tools with what people actually do in the shop floor and that's i think where a lot of people struggle right we have this sprint well what what are we doing in, in this three week period of time we are going to order some stock and we're going to um, get through the first two steps of the process, pro overall process to finish this thing. Now we don't have to worry about the other 10 steps that come after those two. We can just focus on 
right? What are you guys going to do over the next three years or th not next three years, next three weeks, whatever of that time frame yeah. is of this. And we can stay focused on what's right in front of us and not have to concern ourselves of what's next. Right. And then after three yeah. weeks, we actually did something. We accomplished something. Um, granted, Yay. we still have a lot of work to do. Uh, yeah. So it keeps the morale but going it, up. Yeah. And, 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 but it, at the end of that three weeks, you go, look, boss, 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 look what we did. And the stakeholders go, ah, oh, that's great. I'll continue signing your checks. Right? right. But if you wait three years, they'll be like, what's happening? Yeah. I'm just pouring money into a MBD hole. You know, it's exactly. like, it's like, it's like, uh, you know, my favorite saying about a, 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 a boat, you know, it's just a hole in water that you throw money into. <laughs> so True. let's not do that. Right. <laughs> but you can go let's... fishing from a boat. You can't go fishing from your MBE uh, <laughs> desk. Good point. But, right. Well, but you could go fishing for some more fun money from your supply chain. You could. And, and yeah, you good. have, because, yeah, I mean, to your point, if I asked for money for just uh, the next three weeks and I got something to show from it, they're going to be much more apt to give me more for the next three weeks or the next six months. Whereas if I spend two years working on something and okay. I don't got nothing to show for it, we might as well just kill it now because people. Well, you wouldn't, yeah, you, you wouldn't hire a contractor in your house and, you know, have them paint one room for two years. <laughs> Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> right. So why would you do that with your company? Yeah, so exactly. totally makes sense. All right. So flipping over to some graphics here, um, you know, what is agile? Well, it's a methodology for getting the things done. So we've taken that. We said, hey, methodology for getting things done. Cool. Um, it's got builds team momentum. It helps with focus prioritization and it really in illuminates stakeholder visibility, right? That's what we were just talking about. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. So the yeah. next thing is scope, right? Stacy yeah. Matrix. I don't actually know who Stacy is, but maybe we should. Um, maybe Connor can look that up for us. I'm pretty um, sure Stacy was onto something though. <laughs> uh, for sure, definitely onto something. So on the x-axis technology, on the y-axis requirements. And so see here, we're talking math here. We got a little graph theory going, this is great. We go from left to right on the technology scale, close to certain, we know exactly what that's gonna take. And far from certainty, we have no clue. Next thing on the y-axis, close to agreement, everybody's in alignment, we're getting there, we know exactly what to do. And then on the, as we go up that y-axis, far from agreement, so this isn't like rocket science or anything. Simple tasks, you know, cut me a slice of bread. Okay, I'm pretty sure I can agree to cut you a slice of bread and I know how to do that, right? I'm pretty certain I know how to do that. Then we start going up as we get out to that scale of like complicated. There's tons of complicated stuff. And then we have on the far end, <laughs> anarchy. <laughs> so clearly, I mean, there are some model-based implementations and, and CAD interoperability solutions that are total anarchy. But how do we bound it in between? This is when we've got super complex. And this is like, whoa, right where MBE implementation falls, right? Mm -hmm. Far from agreement and far from certainty, somewhere in the middle. And so you're trying to figure out how to get get down to something that is in the yellow zone, complicated, decompose it more into simple zone, into those bite-sized chunks, so we can go to the next step. For a long time, been that disconnect between product engineering and manufacturing, right? You know, product engineering, design stuff, uh, you know, personal story for me, my whole family are union electricians, right? Yeah. Um, I've, my dad and brother have uh, affectionately referred to me as the dumb engineer in the family for years. Um, <laughs> so, because uh, they don't. Tell them you're a YouTube star now, so. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They're just, they're just jealous. Um, <laughs> you know, but but the reality is, I mean, there, there's a little bit of truth to what they're saying. I mean, they're the ones that have to make stuff work. Uh, you know, what happens, in, what happens in the manufacturing floor, a lot of times, a lot of what happens on the manufacturing floor stays in the shop floor. Um, you know, and that's that's that complex stuff. Uh, you know, with this agile approach and these user story approaches, there's a lot of things that happen in the ma manufacturing floor that are simple, right? 
I got to order a piece of bar stock. I got to, you know, turn something down to a certain diameter or whatever. There's simple stuff. Simple stuff. So, yeah. And, and that's what, that's one of the beauties of this is that simple stuff, um, those user stories, you're going to find, you know, you're going to have a couple of them each sprint and, and you're going to get those quick wins and you don't have to put a whole lot of effort into them. Yeah. Just but, do it, get it done, move over. Yeah. Move on. And that, but then it gives you time to focus on those complex um, processes yeah. and those, I mean, companies are making specialized, you know, they specialize in making things, you know, if a company makes missiles, you know, it, making missiles is complex. If it was simple, if, there'd be a lot more people making <laughs> missiles. Um, I, I mean, I guess my point is whether it's electronics, automotive stuff, airplanes, jet engines, whatever, there's complex stuff. And that's the stuff that separates yeah. every company from their competitors and from everybody else. So you can now focus on those complex um, things, uh, you know, because we live in a digital world and technology is getting extremely digital, right? I mean, um, more and more so, every every day. Yep. Yeah, and 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 I think you know a lot of people look at MBD and what it does for engineering. You know, I mean, I, I, I you know as well as I do. You, we've talked to so many people when you mentioned MBD, they're like, oh yeah, we don't want to create drawings anymore, so we're just going to stop. Okay, you, you know, you're communicating that, that, that drawing. Well, what about the guy who's using the drawing today and now he doesn't have one? Now what happens, people? Exactly. <laughs> so it, it just, it's an enabler. And I, and I think yeah. that's what people need. This, we're not just getting rid of drawings and going to MBD because we don't want to create drawings anymore. No right? way. I, and now granted, I don't know very many designers out there that enjoy the drawing creation process. It's a tedious yeah, I process. Don't. Nope. Um, never want to create another drawing ever again. I'm an MBD girl. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a fan. Uh, I'll admit it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you you have to look at what's what what kind of technology um in manufacturing and your supply chain can reuse that model, right? You wrote a book called Reuse Your CAD, right? You have hey. to look at that those complex processes, those complex problems and challenges, and do a little digging. You know, some of those complex um, challenges. You know, the solution isn't going to just present itself. Right, you have right. to actually uh, get into those user stories and really dig into what is it that I really need. Um, so, yeah, and it's like it's like you said, building a missile. If it were easy, it'd be done already. Right. So, I mean, it's complex, so get over it. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's complex, get over it. And so what? You made this beautiful waterfall project management plan. Great. It's probably got a, a pretty decent sanity check on your money. But it's the scope is so wildly unpredictable and totally enormous. And the people implementing are totally unpredictable and annoying. And the execution is so erratic and you get strange, bizarre results <laughs> and you're like, huh, I didn't expect that. I, I just, there's so many more unknowns than there are knowns. And it's, it's just super, super scary. So again, back to the waterfall approach, it's great kind of sort of for initial plans, you know, and, and the agile mindset we call really this a roadmap which is just a, a high level target execution, but all of the nitty gritty detail that goes on in between, we're really gonna to get it in there and down and dirty and look at it in like one week, two weeks, three week segments, whatever your team decides. You know, just to repeat what you said, I mean, a waterfall approach works fine when you're kind of wash, rinse and repeat. You're doing projects where you're doing the same thing every time. Yeah. Right. But, you know, we're MBD and MBE by nature is we're changing how we do things completely. So maybe once it, maybe once your MBE environment, the people processes, standards and tools are all matured to a point and everybody's using them. Maybe you can revert back to a waterfall approach. Maybe. I, yeah. I don't know. Um, but at right. least through that initial phase where we're kind of reinventing the wheel, it is it doesn't work. Um, it just doesn't work. I agree. Yeah. Any thoughts on your experiences with lean uh, implementation approaches? 
um, compared, compared with Agile and where they're appropriate and where they're challenging? Yeah, that's a that's a tougher question, right? I mean, lean to me is um, it's a way to capture requirements. Um, you know, lean manufacturing. Uh, you know, with your design for Six Sigma, those principles I think still have a place. We can't just throw them out; they're proven. Yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, exactly. If anything, those lean principles. Uh, you know, for instance, uh, what, what, what we've done, we've used lean princi pr principles to do a value stream mapping and and map out the current state. You know, that's still a very valuable initiative because totally. you need to capture how you're running your business today. Um, and so and many those, people don't actually know how they're running their business today. That's true. Maybe yeah. one guy knows, but certainly the whole organization doesn't really have a good understanding and mindset and flow about it. That's true. And and those and you're right, because those those lean principles, there may be an expert um, one or two people. Those that user story, you, you take those lean principles, they they will present themselves or can present themselves in your user stories. Absolutely. Like, so you don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater just because you're using an agile approach um to build your mb model based enterprise right right yeah yeah and i think your point about writing user stories has been a really big aha moment for me over the last year as i've personally shifted my thinking and uh, approach to you know the work i do every week into Great. Let me just think about the user story. Let me set my intention, even if it's a little thing, you know, but if it's complex and you're having a hard time starting, I find it as a really great centering tool and grounding tool to say, I got this. Like, this is exactly what I need to do. It's decomposing the story. I can move on and then get started with my work and, and get something out there. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I mean, you've heard me say it a lot, one of my favorite sayings, and I don't even, I gotta have to look it up and see who said it, but, you know, how do you eat an elephant, <laughs> right? One bite at one a time. At a time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you, you know, trying to plan out your next two years of work, you know, and, and sticking to that plan is just exhausting and frustrating. And, you know, you're almost obviously- Almost really impossible, right? It's just yeah. impossible. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, at a high level, you obviously want a roadmap. OK, here's what we're going to do over the next two years, the next five years, the next, you know, however far out you want to plan. But when you get into those technical details, you know, that you mentioned at the beginning of this call, you can't plan those out two years ahead of time. You no. have to have a methodical approach and agile is a methodical approach and it works and it's, you know, time and it's to, hard, and but it, it works. works. Yeah. yeah, and it can be fun too, you know, because. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 And. You did a model based implementation effort uh, before you came to action engineering. And it was how long? Uh, I spent. 40, no, four years, <laughs> it just felt like 40, <laughs> <It's about> three, <laughs> three, or, three or four years. Um, you know, and I, and I was really focused on the tools. You know, it, so I mean, it was uh, it, it, that part of it was uh, rewarding, but you, you know, it, it was also it was rewarding, sort of at first, because you you created some really cool way to model something or or you know create a three D PDF. Um, you feel rewarded and then and then you just you know, you throw it out to the business units and and they have no interest in it at all it's like somebody raiding on your parade it's like what have i been doing wrong you know um, right and, and was was that a kind of waterfall -y approach traditional waterfall planned out um no nah, i mean for the tools development we were we were using agile we used jira you know we were okay. a team and and uh, for the tool development and the capability development um i would say it was more of a blended approach right it was like a blend between a waterfall and an scrum, agile approach maybe what is that scrum fall <laughs> yeah <laughs> agile like fall. That. 
Woo! <laughs> All right. So so experience there on the tool side, but on the the people and the process and the standard side, straight old traditional waterfall. Yeah, it, it depended. You know that that was a large company. Um, you know, and there was some some organizations that were will, that were committed to invest in their people and their processes, and they made it work. And and there was some success with MB, MBD and MBE. Um, other organizations, it was 100% an IT project. Um, yeah. Right? I remember walking into a, a, a tool shop and the plant manager said, okay, you guys are you know, here for the next four days to do your little experiment. Um, you know, it, the, it wasn't really what I had hoped to, to walk into. Um, so it, there was no commitment there because and, and rightfully so. Right. I mean, if you're going to have to retrain your entire shop um, as a plant manager, that's a pretty. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, um, overwhelming. Overwhelming is the word I'm looking for. Relax. <laughs> yeah, it's a big commitment and, you know, investing into uh, changing how the shop works isn't making them money, right? It's taking it away from what's keeping that shop in business. Um, yeah. So it is a tough sell, right? It's uh, a tough sell. So I think in hindsight, if we could have taken a much um, more agile approach, maybe they would have been bought into it a little bit more, right? Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting. Just, yeah. Yeah, and I'm not sure anybody's doing that. So I don't think, I don't think we should take. You know, we should be sad about that. We should just learn from it, right? Like, what can we do? How can we help the shop floor adopt? And um, and how can we show them in a two week or four week time period how important and exciting this can be, and how it will change their lives and make the company more money? Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, but you have to have that. You have to be focusing on all those four legs, right? People, yep. processes, standards, and tools. And I can absolutely, without a doubt, say when it worked, people were looking at all four. When it didn't work, they were only looking at one or two of the four. You, you, you have to have a plan for all, all four of them. Um, and not only that, it, it can't just be engineering or IT. It also has to span across... It's model-based enterprise for a reason. Right? Right. It's, not model, it's, not, it's not just model-based design department. Right? <laughs> so it's, or even just model-based engineering. We use that one a lot as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the D, the M, and the I. We need model-based design, manufacturing, and inspection at a minimum. Then you can go to the next steps of supply chain and model-based systems engineering and, and predictive analytics in your shop and IOT. I mean, it's, it's just foundational. And if those folks aren't aligned, which is what I think with an agile mindset, we can align the D, the M and the I, and then we can start bringing on other people to really make a powerful impact. Yeah. And I think if, if those other people, you know, the M and the I's and even the supply chain, if they really like just sat down and talked to the experts that have done MBD and MBE, they're probably going to realize that it is actually an enabler of some things they already want to do yeah. that they already have a plan for. Um, yeah. You know, there's a, there's an overlap with all of this stuff with, with strategies and digital manufacturing and digital quality already. Um, yeah. And, and that's, you know, one thing that I think a lot of people miss um, because they already have some of these goals on their yearly or five-year plans anyway. So Ooh, bring them together, yeah. man. Bring, bring, them, bring them together. together. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and there's more money that way too. Yeah. That's yeah. huge. All right. Well, thanks for sharing your thoughts there. Um, have a great vacation this week.